Hi there. So today we're going to install GitLab. And we're going to install using uh, Omnibus, which is the, rec the recommended method. Okay, so on the left here, we have just our uh, browser. On the right here, we have, I've just set up a very, um, it's a Ubuntu 18.04. Uh, it's just the base install, uh, so nothing on it. Okay, so if we come to uh, docs, GitLab.com, uh, Omnibus. So from here, we'll see down the page, installation and configuration. So let's go for installing GitLab. You'll see the recommended installation. And we're just going to choose uh, Ubuntu. So if you choose Ubuntu, uh, you'll then get to this stage. And here there's a series of uh, three steps. Really, the fourth step is your um, uh, email pre preferences. And the way it's, it's set up is we have some um, copy paste commands. It just sets up uh, and installs some prerequisite packages. Uh, and then we have uh, another command here, step two, which sets up the app repository. Uh, so you're able to then to go ahead and install GitLab -E. Okay, so if you look at this one, so copy paste. So again, we're just updating the existing app uh, sources. And then we're going to go ahead and install curl, which we use later on, and then open SSH server, which is the SSHD daemon. And then we just install CS certificate to make sure we're fully up to date. Okay, so that's, that's done. Let's see. The next step, the next step is to do with um, when GitLab wants to send email. Um, we support various uh, SMTP servers. In this case, we're suggesting you use Postfix. And there's a link here if you need more details about um, how that's set up. So we'll just go ahead and click Internet Site. This is a host name we're going to access GitLab at. Just OK. Install that. So next we want to install, uh, we want to run the script, script.dev.ssh, and this, this will change if you're using uh, uh, Enterprise Linux or the CentOS. Uh, so here, this, is, uh, this will do some Ubuntu uh, specifics. So copy paste that. So it just does, again, some prerequisites. In our case, it's installing app transport HTTPS, and it's installing uh, etc app sources .list, um, GitLab, GitLab-EE. So now our system knows where to find the GitLab-EE uh, uh, software package. So let's we'll go ahead and install the package. Okay, so it takes a, a few moments to install, and while I was doing that, I'll explain why I didn't do the copy paste. Okay, so here I want to demonstrate after the package is installed, uh, all of GitLab's configuration starts with um, the config file, git, gitlab.rb. Uh, you'll find this file in slash etc slash gitlab slash gitlab.rb. Um, what this is doing here is just a shorthand way of uh, configuring your system initially with an external um, URL. But we're going to go in and change the uh, config file and then continue with the, the steps as suggested. Uh, Looking at this page while it's continuing to install the package, um, HTTPS is supported. And by default, GitLab will reach out to the Let's Encrypt service and obtain the SSL cert from there and then configure uh, your instance to use that cert. Uh, you, can, you can also use your own cert. Or as in our case, we're, at the moment, we're just going to use HTTP. OK, so it looks like we're done installing. You can see by the GitLab logo. Uh, thanks for installing Git, GitLab. 
it's now telling us here that we need to go ahead and configure uh, GitHub.rb. And once we've done that, we can then run reconfigure. So let's just go and have a look at uh, GitLab.rb here. This file, uh, you should definitely go and read. It's got lots of examples of um, configuration. And when you use this in, con in conjunction with our documentation, you'll see how you can configure various parts of GitLab. What we're checking for just now is we want to focus on external URL. Yeah. I'm just going to keep this as gitlab.example.com. Uh, you should, of course, change it to, um, to your exact uh, setting. If you scroll down here, you'll see lots of uh, options. Okay, so let's go back to here. And our next step was uh, the reconfigure. So let's do the reconfigure. Uh, GitLab is made up of lots of components, uh, some third party software, uh, our own software. And we use GitLab.rb as the overarching configuration file. So that's known as the first, that's, that's the configuration source. So, and when you run reconfigure, uh, what that is doing is it's taking the, uh, all the defaults the system has, and then it's taking your specific settings from GitLab.rb, and then it's reconfiguring all of the other configuration files that the various components use. Um, in this case, it's currently doing Postgres. So before it got to here, it would have made, uh, it would have created a Postgres user. So it takes, um, it makes sure that your OS has all the appropriate user accounts and that all the submodules and software components that GitLab uses gets either the default configuration along with your specific configuration, which is contained in GitLab.rb. So you'll see here we've already, uh, Postgres has already been configured. Uh, the database schema has been created. Uh, it's just going in, and at the moment it's doing some Rails um, uh, cache, so clearing the Rails cache. So it's completed, and you, if you watch, you can scroll up and down this, this list and you'll see uh, the various components being done. So at the moment, we're doing Sorry, a site kick. I understand that. Sorry, I didn't understand that. And then we're carrying on. Nginx. Uh, on the first run, it does a lot of work. Uh, it's taken the initial setup, it's provisioning the the user account is creating the directories. It's that provisioning the config files for the components, and then it's starting up various components. Uh, as you move forward with Git, GitLab and you make some more changes to GitLab to RB, um, it won't go back and redo all this work. It, it knows <coughs> what's already been done, <coughs> and it will only make the changes uh, necessary. And we're almost there. <clears throat> Sorry. I know this Grafana takes a few seconds to run. Um, this work here that you see, uh, directories, creating this directory, and you can make sense of it. It says it's creating a new, new directory. It's making sure the mode is what we want it to be, and it's making sure the owner is GitLab Prometheus. Um, if you're familiar with uh, Chef, so GitLab reconfigure will use a local Chef client do all this work for us. That's building on the back of um, the Omnibus Chef. That's why you'll see the words recipe. <laughs> okay, so that's finished. We can check the status. 
So from the package installation, we updated GitLab.rb. We then ran reconfigure. And you'll see after the end, end result of all that is we have a whole bunch of services running, uh, which is Git, GitLab. It's not just one component. It's a whole suite of components. Okay, so the next steps, uh, we have to browse the host name. So let's just open a new browser. And we set our URL to be GitLab. Dot example dot com HTTP and here and you're presented with a change of password. So set an uh, initial password. So that initial password, Git, GitLab will install with a user account called root. So what we're doing there is we've just set that initial password. So this user is an administration user, and you can use it um, obviously to admin administer Git, Git, GitLab or uh, create projects. Uh, it's not mandatory. Once a system has been configured and you go ahead and create uh, new users, you can give one of those accounts administrator privilege, and then you can use that. So you're able to uh, uh, use root if you want to use root, but you don't need to. But here, let's just go and click on the project, and then you go ahead and fill out the box. 